partner, Mr. Marty Smith, class of 1998. How we doing? I love it. Get fired up. That's why we're here. As Colby so eloquently stated, I don't know how I can follow him. Didn't he do a great job? As Colby so eloquently stated, my name's Marty Smith, Radford University class of 1998. Yes, I am a fossil. Though I speak publicly for a living, I can't articulate to you guys what an honor this is for me and what a humbling moment it is to be able to come home this is home and try to share a message with you guys that you can take with you throughout the rest of your life. It's such a tremendous honor for me to be here, for my friends who traveled from all over the place to be here, and for my wife, Lainey, class of 99. I'm not going to date you too bad, honey. <laughs> so President Kyle, thank you so much to you and your staff for having me. I have the sweetest memories of this place. They live in a Polaroid sort of fashion. They're foggy at times, but have intense bursts of great clarity and vibrancy. I found love here. I found direction here. I found opportunity. Lifelong friends. Again, some of them are sitting right down here. I drank my first beer at this school. <laughs> I met my wife at the same frat party. <laughs> Delta Chi. I knew y'all would like that. <laughs> and man, y'all served that beast ice. I'm still trying to figure out where the train came from and where it went from that night. <laughs> that stuff will leave you wondering where you were. I am so proud to be an alumnus of this university, and you should be too. Fifteen years ago-ish, maybe give or take a couple, I was you. I sat right here. I actually sat up here. They used to have something called a Dean Scholar, and I sat up here on this stage and listened to some guy whom I admit I don't remember try to tell me about how to succeed in the world and what the world was really all about. All I wanted to do was go drink beers with my buddies. I know where your head is today, and I respect it. <laughs> this is a day to celebrate when you're 22 years old sitting out there, especially as hot as, hot as it is. Y'all are wearing black, fanning yourselves. I won't keep you too long, I promise. Sitting there listening to a, some old man go on and on is exasperating. I was that way once too, but I'm not anymore. I've come to learn that those who came before us are far wiser and far more interesting. They've lived it, been there, done that. I've lived what you've lived, not that I'm especially interesting. I will say this, Liberty got Jeb Bush today. Virginia Tech got some Google executive. Y'all got me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm just a guy who reports about sports for a living. That's my job, not my identity. I'm a father, a husband, a friend. I'm a brother. Today's message is not about professional excellence. To me, professional excellence lives at the intersection between passion and preparedness. If you work harder than the next guy and you're kind to people along the way, professional excellence is attainable for anybody. And if anyone tells you otherwise, it's because they don't live at that intersection. Their motor wouldn't take them there. Once you reach that intersection, it's all about passion, desire, and opportunity, and all three are vital. Let's talk about opportunity for a minute. Here in a moment, you're going to have a Radford diploma. Be proud of that. That's no small feat. Someone told me recently they had concern about the perception that a Radford degree is somehow inferior to those from other schools. This person was ingrained in this university and had concern that folks maybe didn't feel a Radford degree was so impressive. Let me tell you something. Anybody who thinks that is wrong. Anybody who thinks that, tell them to turn on Sports Center. I'll be waiting. A degree is an opportunity. It's an opportunity that cracks a door. Doesn't matter if it says Radford, Harvard, Duke, Virginia Tech, I don't care. It's a piece of paper that offers an opportunity. And from there, it's up to you to kick that damn door down. 
Let no one compromise your belief that you can do that. No door stands in your way with a Radford University diploma. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what your social or economic backgrounds are. In a few minutes, you'll have that college diploma. A college diploma is a key that starts a car. All those keys differ. They look different. They say different things. Some start Ferraris and some start your grandma's Cutlass 88. Some are faster than others, but they all move you forward towards the destination you choose, and it's up to you to find its limits. I pushed every limit. I grew up in a tiny little middle of nowhere Virginia town. I got a degree from this school, and I got out and I got paid 13 grand a year. I waited for the next crack in the door, and I kicked the door down. I want to share with you a quote. I don't ever want you guys to forget where you're from. I just learned this quote this morning. This wasn't in the script that I prepared. If you don't forget where you're from, you'll always end up where you're supposed to be. Think about that a minute. You need to be proud of where you're from. You need to be proud that you went to Radford University and that you can go out into the professional world and represent it. That's an honor. I will say the world's tough these days, y'all. Life is one big deadline. Succeed under immense pressure. Don't stumble. Lead, don't follow. Stand out, but don't. I don't envy you guys straight up. Tough world. I'm not sure if I graduated today, there would be me. I'm not sure if that $13,000 a year job is there anymore. I, went, I was a newspaper writer. Newspapers are struggling today. So what if you face that same thing? What if you have all that talent and all that desire? Where's your opportunity? How do you guys, as the class of 2015, get that job and keep that job and excel to the next job? Be fearless. I was. And I was just stupid enough to believe every dream I had was attainable. God Almighty, that's naive. But is it? I was never told otherwise, and it worked. Don't fear. Oh, pardon me. This is important. A couple years ago, I was up at a seminar at ESPN where I worked. There was a guy they brought in. He was up at the front of the room, charged, charged with telling us to stay in our lanes. Stay in your lane. I didn't know what that meant. To me, that meant do your job. Don't let anybody buy you. Don't take chances. Take a conservative approach. Don't veer too far right or too far left. Be linear, not abstract. When that guy said that comment, I checked out right there. I was done with him. Stay in your lane. Obviously, that works for some people. Some people have wonderful lives staying in their lane. But don't you dare let anybody tell you to stay in your lane if you have aspirations otherwise. How many folks who shaped history the way we know it stayed in their lane? You think Steve Jobs stayed in his lane? Some of y'all are already bored with me and you're texting your buddies and your girlfriend asking where you're going to meet after a while. <laughs> that fancy iPhone 6, you wouldn't have it if Steve Jobs stayed in his lane. You think George Patton stayed in his lane? Would we live in the greatest land in the world and be free if George Patton didn't use an unconventional approach in World War II? We're fortunate we didn't have to answer that, right? He had this great quote. He said, we herd sheep, we drive cattle, we lead people. Lead me, follow me, or get the hell out of my way. Did Johnny Cash or the Ramones or Bruce Springsteen or Lady Gaga stay in their lanes? Nope. Imagine what we would have lost had they decided to stay in their lane. These days, the way I see it, if you stay in your lane, you're getting passed, yarded. Because today's world is not a two-way street anymore. People aren't waiting around for you or abiding by the double yellow line. Today's world is a 10-lane highway running 100 mile an hour, and a lot of times there's a middle finger in the air. You've got to be ready. Everybody here is probably active on every form of social media. These days, companies have even monetized that. Everything lives real time at 140 characters a second. So I implore you to write thank you notes. It matters. I write them to everybody. And they remember. You want to stand out in the 100 mile per hour rat race? Then slow down just a minute. Pull out a pen. Time spent with that pen separates you from the pack. In a world of texts and tweets and immediacy and 24-7 people going on and on and on on television, that time spent with that pen buys you years in a man's memory. You guys heard of Mike Krzyzewski, he coaches Duke basketball. He just won a national championship for the fifth time. More than a thousand wins at Duke. He's something else. I wrote him a thank you note about a month ago, and he wrote me one back. 
You think I, he's not going to remember me in this pack of a million reporters and talking heads on TV? He'll remember me because of that note. I also say learn to listen. If you learn to listen, it'll benefit you. That one took me a lot of time. It's time I want to save you. Listen, your parents, coworkers, friends, teachers, siblings, they all have really interesting things to say. Be selfless and attentive in that way. Shut up and listen a minute. You'll be better for it. Some of the greatest leaders in our history are, were great listeners and are great listeners. In today's world of constant posturing, great listeners stand out. Good listeners often demand attention and command respect. If you're always jabber John, folks will tune it out. If you're selective, they will be invariably attentive to you. That's one reason I'm where I am in sports journalism. I want to tell you a story a minute. I speak when my interview subjects finishes, finish his or her thoughts. I wasn't always that patient. You know who taught me that? A guy named Del Renard Jr. Yeah, that's right. Jr. Screaming. I had done an interview with another NASCAR driver named Jeff Gordon. And I was really proud of that. I thought it was this great interview. And I was cocking around like it was really great. But I cut, I cut Jeff off a few times during that interview. He was trying to articulate a thought. And I cut him off before he was done. I didn't listen well. I didn't let the conversation breathe or ponder his cadence. Later that day, I was interviewing Earnhardt after the race, and he told me I needed to shut up. I said, excuse me? We're pretty close. He can tell me to shut up. He said I needed to stop interrupting, that Gordon had things he wanted to hear, and I had interrupted that. I didn't allow him to hear because I wouldn't shut up and let Jeff breathe. I felt awful. I was furious with myself, but I stashed it away. Constructive criticism. Don't posture, improve. Take that and look in the mirror with it because the mirror doesn't lie. People are going to criticize you. That's America. And if you reach a certain occupation of status, people are going to kiss your ear. Promise. That's America too. You can use both of those as fuel, but neither as currency. Stash them away, let them fill up your tank, and be a better person. Because that mirror is going to tell you the truth. When you're brushing your teeth in the morning and you're looking at those eyes, those eyes don't lie. They hold the cards. Radford great, Radford's greatest impact on me was the people. The people that invested in me had far greater impact than anything else here. As Colby stated, I worked in sports information as a student. And I walked into that office. I met a guy named Mike Ashley. Mike's not here today. I wish he were. He had an engagement. I know Rick Rogers is here today. His daughter's graduating. Congratulations to you both. Dave Hunziker and Lynn Phillips. Those folks worked in the sports information office and they grew me up. Every single one of them. I love them so much. They built my self-esteem in a time when I really needed it. They trusted me to get real world work done. Their necks were on the line for trusting a student to do it right. I don't know why they believed, but they believed and I felt that belief. And I've tried to pay that belief forward. I urge you to help others. It's the greatest professional reward in this life. That's hard to understand right now as you're getting ready to have this diploma in your hand. It's hard to understand what paying it forward means. But as you age a little bit and have a little greater context, I promise you nothing feels better. So if you had a professor, a teacher, an advisor, coach, friends that made your college experience especially memorable, that believed in you and championed your dream and your passion, find them today. Thank them today. I'm fortunate I get to do that now, 20 years later. When I think about Radford, I think about acceptance and searching for who I was and who I wanted to be. Just so you know, I'm still looking. I'm not sure you ever really figure that out. It was my time to be young and wild and stupid and dress dumb and act dumber. You won't realize the impact of your growth as a person here until later on. That's life. You go and move and do and be until moments become years and years become decades. And then you're standing at the counter one day making school lunches for your kids at 545 in the morning. And you go, man, mama died 17 years ago. Then you'll think about a moment that makes you smile and a moment that makes you weep. In a moment that makes you wonder why you did it, how you did it, and how in the world it actually worked. Be confident but, not, confident but not egotistical. Let's talk ego a minute. Ego will bury you. I've seen it compromise marriages, destroy friendships. I've seen it end careers. If there's any level of lessons learned wisdom, I hope you take away from this drivel today. It's very simple. Work hard and be kind. For as far back as I can remember, my mother beat the golden rule into my head. It's so fundamental. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Don't compromise that. Work is clicks. When you get out into the world, work is clickish. You think high school had clicks? Work is high school high. If you overlook, uh, pardon me, if you outwork the next guy and you're graceful doing it, the rest will manage itself. Trust me, I've lived it. 
I've learned through time that humility and self-confidence walk hand in hand. Cockiness is often posturing from something that's missing. Your skill set might be better than the next guy, but you're not better than the next guy. Be proud, but not prideful. That degree matters. Some of you have parents that worked to the bone so you could walk this stage today. They sacrificed many times and in many more ways than you could ever fathom for you to walk this stage today. So if your mama or your daddy are here, or your grandmother, aunt, uncle, brother, sister, whomever that was, don't forsake that devotion to your success, please. Many of you are looking forward to that post-graduation party. Trust me, me too. Laney and I are staying here all day long just for that reason. But before you run off to crack beers with your buddies and drink goodbye to friends, find your mama and daddy, look them square in the eye, and make sure you say thank you. I wish I could go back and do it different, because I would. My mom couldn't be at my graduation, and she deserved to feel that. She couldn't be there. She was real sick. I should have taken that day to her. I was too selfish at the time. Don't be selfish today. Be selfless. Share this with your family. Trust me, you're going to look back and be glad you did it. Everyone who's anyone had someone who believed. I have way more than I could possibly name today. My parents believed. Nothing I ever aspired to do was scoffed at. It was championed. And I work every day to be that champion for other people, just like, just like those folks were for me. I'll leave you with this. Have passion. Passion exceeds every trait. Passion wins always. You'll meet people who are more talented. You'll meet people who have better opportunities. You'll certainly meet people who are smarter and more attractive. I see that every day, trust me. <laughs> I've never met anybody that had greater passion than I have or greater loyalty than I have. It's an intangible that can't be taught, and if you show up with it, you will impact people well in your life. And if you impact people well in this life, then you win. I was in the gym training the other day. A nice lady walked up to me and said, you're just doing so well at ESPN. What could possibly be your goal? And I looked that lady in the eye, and I said, I want to be the best father and husband I can be. I want to strive to ensure that my kids know their father well and know nobody has their back or loves them more. I want to be defined by my character and my kindness as a man, not, as my, not by my title. I want to be the best friend to every friend. I want to ooze faith and I want to ooze integrity. And as it pertains to the job, I want to dominate every single person in my way. Class of 2015, go dominate every person in your way.